Hey everyone, it's Matty OW here. Today we're just going to go through a brief discussion about my Kovacs settings. It's been about a year and a half since I made the last Kovacs settings video, and I think that the Kovacs menus have been updated a decent extent since then, so I think it's time for another overview of what settings that I like to run uh, in Kovacs. So most of my time will be spent here in the main tab, main settings. And this is mostly because I want to be constantly changing themes uh, per scenario. For example, right now I'm running Clover Bubbles uh, and I'm on a passive scenario. Now, I like to change my theme per scenario depending on what I think is good, what I would want to look at. For example, Static, I would run a fully pure color theme as most people would know me to run. So I would run maybe a static theme here. I have several static themes. And if I'm running like maybe a tracking scenario, I would go to switch to a Clover theme because Clover is an insane tracking player and I would want to copy his settings. So basically, I will have in my description um, a folder containing all of these themes that I have listed here, which you can go and download and import into your Kovacs. The second thing that I like to change uh, all the time when I'm playing Kovacs is my sensitivity. Now obviously, you don't have to copy the sensitivities that I like to run. I keep it in the description of every single VOD that I have, but I don't recommend that you strictly copy it just because I run it. I have a specific feel based on what I think is optimal per scenario, and I think that you should find that for yourself. This is completely up to personal preference and what you think that you are capable of doing when you run Kovacs. Uh, for example, 46.4 CM is basically my default for most scenarios, especially dynamic clicking. But for static clicking, I like to go up to maybe 80 CM. For tracking, reactive tracking especially, I like to go down to a really fast sense, like 30 CM. It is completely up to you, and I just would like to note that I'm here a lot changing sends because I have to change my sends versus uh, keeping the same sense per scenario, and I play all the categories, so I have to make sure that I'm good uh, at everything, and playing the most optimal settings for each category. I keep vertical sensitivity locked to horizontal, and I don't run inverted mouse. I don't know anyone who runs inverted mouse. My zoom sends multiplier is 1, though I do not ever use zoom in Kovacs. Uh, toggle zoom ADS, clearly I have that off, I do not ever run zoom. FOV is something that I change constantly as well, depending on whether I'm running a target switching scenario that requires a higher FOV. For example, Vox TS. If I go and boot up Vox TS, Voltaic. <clears throat> For this scenario, just because I would need to see more targets on the sides, I would bump this up to about one ton. And that lets me see a ton more targets, like the ones that would spawn over here and over here. And it makes it easier for me to get to them. For other scenarios, like Kin TS or Psalm TS, I will bump this up to maybe 120 or 125. Some other scenarios where I've seen better performance on a higher FOV are maybe wide wall static scenarios, or even some wider tracking scenarios. In terms of the crossers that I like to use, I've been using this one by Clover, which has uh, ascended. But also in the description, I'm going to include a folder of all the crossers that I like to use. For max game FPS, I keep this at an arbitrary high value so that I can always have the maximum amount of FPS possible. I don't think you should limit that unless you're experiencing screen tearing or other problems uh, regarding a uncapped frame rate. Menu X FPS is the same way, arbitrarily high value. I don't want my FPS to dip too much when I'm tabbed out or in the menus. For countdown before challenge start, I have this at 0.25. The reason I run this is mainly because I got used to the aim lab delay at the scenario start. It gives me a little second to prepare or get situated right when a run starts, and I think that it might be a good try for you to run, it's completely up to you. A lot of players don't run anything here, but I like to run it and I'm pretty much used to it at this point. For keybinds, these are all my keybinds. You can pause the video and copy them if you want. Aim down sights, I keep it Z, I don't use it. All of these are here. 
weapons. I have all of these cosmetics off. If you're into aim training, I don't know why you wouldn't have any of these off. Just keep everything, all of these additional decor or decals, all of them off. We don't want anything clouding our vision of the map. All of these extra sounds, I don't have any. And all of these hit markers here. I only use these if I want to have my crosshair light up if I'm on target or if I'm hitting the target. But I don't use these anymore, mainly because I've gotten used to aim lab and just not having them. But I know that these are useful for many tracking scenarios, so give it a try if you would like to try hit markers and getting that sort of feedback for your tracking. For video settings, it's pretty much self-explanatory. I keep everything on low or off so that I can get the most amount of uh, performance increases and frame rate increases as possible because this is an aim trainer and frames win games. You can pretty much go in here and pause the video and copy everything that you see. Specifically for scene color, I set this on medium so that glowing bots work for the themes that have uh, glowing bots like else, else's theme and his cues theme. For visuals, this is a big one. You can change your themes here as well, but you can also customize your themes. Which I recommend if you are a new player, actually. It's very fun making your own themes, and I think that you should customize it based on what you want to see when you are playing game training. Again, it's all personal preference. Up here, you can see that I have hide gibs, uh, no bullet holes, just so that I can keep my visuals and my view of the map in aim training as uncluttered as possible. For sounds, again, I like to use different sounds per scenario. Or not even per scenario, but just whatever sounds that I would like to use. And I will keep these, again, in a folder in my description, which you can access and import into your Kovacs. Currently, I'm running Appa Hit 4 for hit sounds. Head hit sounds doesn't really matter for most scenarios, but I run Appa Hit 3. For the kill confirmed, which is whenever you get a kill, I run Saya Kick Deeper. And for the spawn sounds, I run Bell 5. Down here, I don't play around anything with pitch. And in terms of advanced, you can just copy these settings, but mostly I don't touch anything here besides the default. For UI, again, you can mostly just copy the video here. Pause the video and copy it. I don't run high score bar. I mostly call it a choke bar because it just... I try to keep things out of view that will cause me to choke, like the timer. And that's why I have my HUD set up like this. My timer is up here. I moved the title of the scenario up here so it's visible, my FPS is over there, and session stats are over here, previous kill is up here, though it's not being shown, and you can just pause the video and copy it like here. In terms of palette colors, I will keep a file again in my description that you can download and import into your Kovacs directory and it will give you this palette for the menus. For miscellaneous things. Um, I hide invalid scores on the leaderboard. Those are like cheaters or whatever glitch scores there are. I try to hide those. Make sure enable seasonal content is off if you don't want to have those random event bots popping up on your maps. And for statistics report, I have on challenge completion. And what this does is it ensures that Kovacs will generate the Excel sheets for each score that you can look at for extra stats in your Kovacs directory. And that should be about it for all the settings that I like to use in Kovacs. Once again, follow my Twitch for streams in Overwatch and more Kovacs VOD reviews. And stay tuned for the next VOD. I'll see you guys later.